Hi, my name is Willan Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to introduce to you an acclaimed singer, songwriter, educator, new mom, the amazing Leslie Barth. For more on Leslie, you can read more about her right below this video, but in the meantime, here is a sneak peek at the amazing talent of Leslie Barth. Evening starts to pass Those nighttime worries begin to disappear A window opens up As you refill how are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Will? I'm doing better now that I'm speaking with you. And I'm so excited that the audience just got just a little sneak peek of your incredible talent with your song, Not Tonight. Talk to me a little bit about how that song came about for you. Well, I have a Patreon page. And one of the things that I do every month is I kind of share with um, certain patrons on there my creative process. And that can involve sharing a song or a snippet of a song, something that I'm working on. And what I love about that is that it keeps me writing even through kind of less fallow creative periods. And so I was writing because I knew I was like, I've got to share something. And everything I had been working on was just sort of fragments, snippets, nothing that I like felt kind of ready to share. And so I just started playing around with um, a keyboard that I have that's just like a 88, you know, keys, weighted Yamaha. It's got like four different keyboard sounds on it. And I had this electric piano sound that is very similar to the one that ended up on the recording. And I was just playing around and the song kind of came in one fell swoop, which is the most fun thing. Because um, <laughs> a lot of songs are kind of hard won uh, through. Yeah, they're arduous. Any... Obviously yeah. it was a flow for you, but I also love, sorry to interrupt, but I also love that like, you even give yourself like these assignments of accountability, you know, to share your process. It's a good thing to have. Yeah, no? it is. Yeah. And I think that like I heard someone say, um, as hard as it is to be an artist today, uh, it, it's even harder to be a fan, which I thought was like a really interesting perspective, Ooh. especially for like an artist to hear, because it used to be really straightforward how to support artists you right. know, about their music. Right. But um, nowadays and, and then obviously with COVID going to shows is kind of limited but I think that we're often as artists not putting our kind of putting our feet in our audience members shoes is that how you say that yeah, absolutely. and and thinking about like okay how do I support somebody that I really like because it's more than just playing something on Spotify and um it's more than just a social media like or a follow um and I think Patreon is one of the tools that like kind of comes up, comes into play there. And um, I have just enjoyed, you know, whether it's Patreon, whether it's a website that people use, whether it's online concerts that you do, that people buy tickets for, the ability to kind of share the process digitally and virtually has been so helpful over the past couple of years. 
Well, especially now more than ever. I mean, you know, we just went through an 18 month trauma. I mean, I think it's a continued trauma. And amidst this trauma, you, Leslie, moved from New York where you were for over a decade and are now in Nashville. I'm curious to know, you know, that you are literally in now in, in figuratively in a new chapter in your life, but yet I'm curious to know how your art has either shifted or has been accentuated through this time when you've had a lot of time to just be with yourself? That's a great question. Um, in addition to all of that, I also had my first child five months ago. Oh, you know, just, um, bringing a, just, just bringing a human into the world, no biggie. Yeah, you know, into a very normal world, one in which I'm well oh. acquainted with. Um, yeah. By the way, it, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So if you hear like inadvertent, uh, or not inadvertent, but if you hear some some fussing, that's my husband with him in the other room. What's his name? Um, Q. When was he born? He was born May 1st. Congratulations. Oh, so, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, all, going, going on five months. Yeah, no, it's fine. I, I hate talking about- I know, months. everything becomes about the baby now. <laughs> I know, but it's it really has changed uh, things a lot. I mean, part of the reason that, you know, we had our sights on Nashville, we had our sights on at some point maybe leaving New York and it made sense with the baby. It made sense during the pandemic. My husband was gigging on, you know, on Broadway and Times Square for many years. And obviously that just all shut down. And so we made this move when I was, I guess in my first trimester and I had an inkling that it would really change things. And it certainly has, it's made me much more um, conscious of how I spend my time. I had to be a lot more intentional and I find myself getting a lot more done uh, with so much less time because I don't have the luxury of like constantly ruminating and second guessing mm. myself, um, <laughs> which I think I definitely spent a lot of time doing, particularly in the pandemic when I couldn't play shows. Um, and just couldn't go out and about. It was, you know, I think we all struggled with mental health and with keeping our heads kind of sane and and moving, looking forward and um, just not spiraling. So that's been a wonderful gift. And then creatively, I mean, it's it's uh, it's probably become pretty cliche to say, but I do sort of see things in a whole different light because of the way he's experiencing the world and seeing how quickly he changes from just these little things every day. You know, it's like moving his arm up and down then coordinates with moving the other arm. Yeah. And so I'm able to see how things progress in this like super tiny way with someone else. And it just sort of inspires me to make small changes every day and get little things done. You, I mean, look at, you're taking basically something that's off of my, on my vision board, I have lots of quotes. You know, one of them is, try and be just 1% better today. And it's, just, and it's just those little step, because look at, we pre-pandemic, it was gig to gig, how to get to the next thing, how to get the most likes, how to get the most content. But now it's like, wait, what are the little things to be grateful for? And the fact that you now have a living, beautiful baby boy that you gave birth to, that you're like literally watching little things grow and move for the first, like these little epiphanies and beautiful moments. I'm sure that's given you this pers newfound perspective of celebrating the little things in life. Uh, totally. Yeah. And I think gratitude is the other side of it because... I am grateful for him. And I also feel like no matter what happens, uh, I've achieved something every day, you know, through kind of supporting you. him. You're gonna get me going. I helping can't him. <laughs> that is so beautiful, Leslie, say it again, I'm sorry. Oh, well, just sort of no matter what, I've achieved something every day. And I know that's something a lot of creative people actually scratch that. I think just a lot of people in general. Um, sometimes we think we're so different from everyone. I don't know how true that is. I just think, I think we like feeling different. I think that's part of what brought us, steered us I mean, into this direction. Right. We're, we're just misfits off to the circus. Right. But it's, you know, it's so corny. And like, I just, you know, I feel like a self-help book these days, but the, just the, you are enough kind of message has really, Get out of here. it's, 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 I can't with you. It's literally, I wish, 
I wish I could bring you to my vision board. It's involved. It's involved. I swear to God, you are in, I swear to God, you ask anyone in New York when I'm directing them, it's literally holding their feet to the ground when they try to like wobble while they sing. It's like, stop apologizing. You are not. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. But Leslie, it's, uh... you're so right. And I'm curious to know as a mom, as a human, as a wife, as an artist, to know that already such a young age, and yes, you're young, my soul is 90, so you're a kid. And, um, <laughs> but I wanna know about looking forward now. You know, obviously, I don't know if there's that, what's normal anymore, but I'm curious to know with all of this newfound or maybe new, newly discovered sense of gratitude, even though you take me as a person that's always been grateful but let's just say maybe a new discovery of newfound gratitude and moving forward what you're most optimistic about hmm. i well the, the project i've been working on the past few months talk about um, it yeah i've actually been writing a book so i've been working on it's part sort of how-to guide, part workbook journal, part lesson planner for teaching artists. I have a lot of friends who also teach lessons and I've taught lessons for many years and I can never find the materials that I need and materials that kind of speak to the reality of being a working musician who also teaches a little bit. There's a lot of great teaching materials out there, but they're largely geared towards either like classroom music education or people that run a Suzuki piano studio full time and, you know, are working, getting their kids into competitions and everything. Right. The reality is most music lessons don't take place that way. Leslie, you found, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's like <laughs> what used to be thought of as limbo, you're actually saying, no, this is actually most of us. And you created yeah. a safe space and something that can be a North Star for people. Yeah, so I'm starting um, what's, what I'm called the Teaching Artist Toolkit. And it's gonna start with kind of a book and a lesson prep guide. And I wanna eventually do a course for people that are just starting out. I just want people to have better music lessons. And most importantly, I want to have artists feel like they can bring their whole selves to teaching because I think inspired teachers make inspired students. Oh my, well, there's the trademark, there's the TM. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've been working on that side of things too and, and I want the second draft of the book. Wait, what's your husband's name by the way? <laughs> uh, Chuck Ramsey. What shows did he do on Broadway? Well, he, no, he played, um, <laughs> he played acoustic guitar and sang in the bars. So he was, he was basically playing for all of the theater crowds after the shows. Wait, what restaurants was he at or just around town? He was at Emmett O'Lunny's and O'Lunny's done yeah. like the playwright, you know, just. Yes. Playwright Tavern. I mean, like I probably saw him like. Probably. Wait, yeah. Okay. This is what I'm loving about this. And this is what I love about <laughs> the, before the Phoenix app is even out. This is just like a show don't tell of what the app's gonna do. It's connecting artists. You don't know who knows who, you know, my brother's just moved to Nashville like you did. I probably know a lot of the same people that you and your husband know because I also have a lot of musician friends who work in restaurants, piano bar scene on Broadway, but a lot of them still are displaced, dare I say, and are in the, exactly the field that has never had a safe haven for the, a book, a, a lesson plan that can be like, I see and hear you. And the fact that you're yeah. creating that, I'm like, oh my God, I could give like, I could literally give it to two dozen people today. Amazing. Yeah, well, I'll definitely let you know once it's done because I'm so passionate about it. And I feel it's just this you, this coming together of a lot of different passions of mine. One of which is music, one of which is education, one of which is sort of, you know, bringing your whole self and becoming a mom really made me feel like I had to ditch the splitting myself in two kind of mentality I had for a long time, music teacher and then like, performing artist and then I had to add mom into the puzzle I was like that's not going to work I've got to like integrate it all and then when I worked in the corporate world I did sort of sales and and marketing um, in tech and you know would work on kind of streamlining and synthesizing sales materials for people so that's what I'm trying to do for all these people that teach that don't really have a place to talk about it that sometimes don't have this conversation because they feel like it's a failure that they're teaching that's right 
That's right. And it isn't. It's actually like what you're doing. It's a combination of all the tools in the tool belt. And but because it doesn't have a name, you know, it's oh, you tried the music thing. You're being got me a teacher. F that. Oh my God. No. I freaking love you, Leslie. There is <laughs> well, you know this. You're like, Will, I I I I know I'm doing it right, but you don't need to hear it from me. But like Leslie, I'm like, my veins are popping because I need to breathe. But two. <laughs> There's no space for this in the market and you're creating There's nothing. No, it's crazy. And I've been like Googling every which way. And I was talking to a friend of mine. I was like, I really just don't find anything. She's like, stop Googling. Like if you can't find it, other people can't. So, you know, it's been really exciting. I've talked to more people ever, friends of mine who I've known for a long time that teach, never really talked to them about teaching before. It's just this weird thing. And it's so crazy because they hold like a lessons. badge of shame they hold it i'm sorry to interrupt but it's like this no. shame thing it's like no it it's is. Like, i mean frankly the way that and why i'm also getting passionate is because as a performer for many 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 years now that i'm a director you know people at first are like oh perform like why would you want to be it's like actually because this is my bliss i want to give this is actually yeah. more fulfilling than being anyway but we that's a whole no, other interview yeah, no, but I mean, I could talk, I feel like we could probably talk for hours, but um, it's been, it's been such a fun journey and coming at it from a place of service of like, because I think it started off as an idea of like, oh God, like I need to stop trading my time for money and I need to like, what can I do? What can I do to make money? And, and then I started working on it and I was like, I don't care what, like, I know the value in this. And I want it. it's like, I'm not out there to make money. I'm not out there to sell like a $2,000 course to struggling artists. I just want to like get good information and material into people's hands so that everybody can have a better time doing it. And people, you know, people feel good about teaching because that's what's the that's one the emotional to one takeaway. That's yeah, the, and you let go of the how you let go of the how, and you have like a true intentional why. Yes, it's totally, I'm connected to the why. And I don't, you know, I want to teach people how to teach. They are, I think most people already know what to teach. I'm not getting into the nitty gritty of it. I don't want to be like, here's some workbooks for around Thanksgiving and the quarter notes. Like there's plenty of that online. Right. But since this, what you do as a teacher, the reason they're hiring you and not just using online materials is because they want someone who's doing it. They want to see why you love performing. They want to know, okay, well, this is kind of what I work on when I'm, you know, getting ready for a jazz gig and uh, working on transposing some songs, whatever it is, um, you know, it's really dorky, but <laughs> Leslie, have you met me? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you, you know, you're the chef, like yes. people can go to the grocery store and get their own ingredients, but you're the chef. They hired a chef. They don't want to cook Everything. I can't with you. Trademark all of this, my love. <laughs> um, listen, I could speak with you forever. Um, yes. You're incredible. Um, I just want to let our audience know for more on the incredible Leslie Barth. You can read more about her right below this video. Leslie, God bless you. Congratulations. When, is there any idea of when people can somewhat expect this to be out there? I'm really shooting for January 1st for a full a full launch. And if anyone's interested in learning more, just message me directly on Instagram or email me and um, I'll let you know where we're at. God bless you, Leslie. God bless you, your husband, your new baby boy Q. And um, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Will.